Hi everyone, I'm so happy to be here. Today I'm going to talk about our Python project for Hag Zurich. A few words about me. My name is Daphne Mordechai, I'm a software engineer. I graduated about 10 years ago from the Hebrew University. I love technology and I love this event. I'm really excited to be here. So what is Hag Zurich? Hag Zurich is one of the biggest hackathons in Europe. It's a really exciting event where hundreds of designers, data scientists, and engineers gather for about 40 hours of coding. That's a brilliant experience, and I really recommend it. Definitely feel free to come and ask me questions about it. Today I'm going to talk about the challenge that we took. Uh, usually hackathons offer challenges, like some sort of a, um, a coding problem or some uh, data set with an open question. Uh, Hagzul offered about 16 challenges and we decided to take the millennials on the move. Basically, uh, we wanted to use data to increase safety uh, on the roads. So what was the data that uh, was given to us? <laughs> First of all, it's important to see that the data was gathered using a dedicated hardware that was installed in the car. So you can see here in the pictures that some of the data is fixed, like um, the vehicle year or the age of the driver, and some of it is what was sampled every few seconds, like the geospatial data, the speed, the engine RPM. So that sounds kind of trivial, but how can you take that and um, make something uh, useful out of that? So the first thing we wanted to do with it is to classify dangerous areas. The reason is that we thought that it could be a comprehensive solution. From the one hand, we can give the, the authorities the list of these areas and maybe they can improve infrastructures. And on the other hand, maybe we can give some information to the drivers while they're in these dangerous zones. And what we did for that. Uh, another thing we, that is really important for us uh, uh, to do, we didn't want it to be another app. We didn't want it to be some another cause for destruction. So you can see the demo that we showed in the hackathon. It's very simple, but think about it. That we wanted it to be installed in the car and just give some information to the driver while he's driving. So you can see that the car is entering a junction. That's it, not a lot of information, not to overload the driver. And you can see that when it exits the, uh, the junction, it becomes uh, green again. It's not all the area, it's just specific the, the road that he's in. Okay, so the first thing we did, we just took the information and put it on the map. It's really nice to see that it's, it's kind of intuitive. It doesn't give us a lot of information, even though it's a nice thing to see. So we decided that we need to do some manipulation about the data with the data so we can uh, extract more valuable information from it. And we decided to focus on the speed. So we, we used the information that we have as drivers and we said, okay, if we take examine two sequential points in time and we see that the speed decreases in like 75%, probably something happened here because the driver hit the bricks. So that, each point that we, each sequential point in time that we saw that this difference, um, we took the location and we decided this location is an alarm. Okay, so we focused on speed, but you can think that we could do the same maybe with different criteria. So now when we have these locations from the alarm set, you can see here for one driver, all the alarm sets, and you can see that some of them are injunctions, which does make sense, but some of them are not. Like you can't know where these alarms will be at. So the next step is to take all these alarms from all the drivers in all the different trips. You can see that they have different colors, these different alarms, and to cluster them into areas. So in this way, automatically, you can, you can cluster the areas and you can also add some thresholds. Say, okay, we have different clusters, but then only if a cluster is big enough, according to some, uh, some threshold that you have, um, this is a dangerous area. And in this process, you can actually automatically um, uh, identify dangerous areas. Okay, so we did this process, but we also wanted to validate our data, validate our results. So we used the UK safety data set of car accidents. We actually did this manually, but for sure you can automate this process. We just wanted to see that the results we receive are actually valid. So now, now when you have this information, 
you have some assumption here, okay? You have an assumption that um, most of the drivers, in most of the drives, most of the rides, the trips, they do drive responsibly and carefully. So if you have one area with a lot of alarms, probably something happened there. So you can now go back to the authorities and see, maybe the signs are not visible, maybe there's a problem on the road, maybe there's something we can do um, to increase safety. And now you can also, in real time, give information to the driver, um, because you know, the, the system can know what is the, the current, uh, what is the GPS coordinate where the car is, and you can just say, okay, in specific areas, you, you can just alert the driver so he will be, drive more responsibly or just look at the road again. And just know that you can do this process, you can use the data in two different ways. One of them you can say, okay, I'm just gonna look at the driver's information and to have uh, dangerous zones that are personalized for him. Maybe he has specific problems in specific ty type of junctions. And you can also do the same, as I showed with all the drivers and all the data sets um, for like a general dangerous uh, areas. Okay, so we did that. Can we do more with the data? We thought we can, so we did. <laughs> <laughs> we took all the, um, all the speed in all the areas and we created a heat map. Um, and you can see, it's just a simple Python uh, histogram. You can see, we, it was really nice for us to see how it really laid the road nicely if you compare it to the map. We didn't use any map, it's just buckets and like you average the speed. And in a way you can see that this is an empirical way of seeing how the drivers behave in, in this area. Um, and what can you do with that? Oh, okay, you can see here, it's the same place where you saw a lot of alarms before. So it's, it's a bit of a different way to approach the data, but it shows about the same thing. You can see that there's an open road over there and the speed is pretty high. And then just before the junction, everyone uh, hit the brakes. So what can you do with that? If before we used the location, now we can use the speed in the car. And if there's a difference between the current uh, car speed and this average speed, and if it crosses some threshold, you can also allow the driver. And you can tweak it a little bit. If you can change it according to the weather, or if there's some temporary constructions on the road, or if you know if you want to tweak it personalized to the driver, maybe according to his age or his experience, etc. You can do that too. And again, you can go back uh, with this information with with this heat map. Think about it when uh, when traffic engineers put the all the speed limits in, in places, they didn't, they didn't have this empirical data. It's like a rule of thumb to say, okay, we need to put a sign here. And maybe now when you do have this map, you can adjust it better. So I wrote a blog post about it and I got really curious because this specific junction, we just use it in the hackathon, you know, you have like two days and you're so tired and we just use one of them. It's, it wasn't even, it wasn't necessarily a junction that was highly clustered. Um, so I like took a virtual uh, ride on Google Maps and I actually could see the road and I could see how I could drive there and then just when you enter, just when you see the junction and when it's visible, you have this speed limit sign. Like you literally don't have one before. So you can now just put one and help the driver to slowly uh, and safely uh, get to the junction. So I just wanted to say that we eventually, we ended up winning this project tired but very happy, and it was a great, great teamwork for all the awesome engineers that you see here. I have a blog post about it if you're interested more, and also we have the code, and feel free to come and ask questions. <laughs>